What's going on, YouTube? I'm trying out a new microphone in this voiceover, so let me know how it sounds. But we're going back to Kalos today, this time to run Delphox. Delphox, I feel like, gets a lot of love or a lot of hate. Personally, as someone who's a fan of Fire-type Pokémon and the Fire Starters, I love this thing, and pairing it with the Psychic typing makes it slightly OP. Fortunately for me, I've got PK Hex working again, so I was able to give it Hidden Power Electric to deal with some problems later on, like Seabold's Gyarados and Lysander's Gyarados. The first of which who I think will be our toughest matchup in the entire game, but I'll address that once we get there. Anyway, let's talk about Delphox's stats. It's a fast special attacker with great special defense. It's frail on the physical side, but it gets a lot of good moves. We get moves like Psychic and Flamethrower by level up, we can take advantage of the Sunny Day Solar Beam combination. We don't have much to deal with the pesky dark types later on, but I think there's a move on here that will come in handy when the time comes. But that's enough babbling about Delphox's moveset and stats. Let's pick this up in Santaloon City. Off the bat, we have a type advantage over the first gym and we definitely want to get this early training out of the way, considering that the second gym leader is Grant, the Rock-type specialist. And as far as the battle against Viola, I'm sure you can guess how this one goes. We're part Fire-type, although Surskit is part Water-type, we have Shadow Ball for it, and it goes down in two Shadow Balls. Against Vivian, I continue using Shadow Ball. It would normally be a 3-hit KO, but because Viola uses a potion, we have to use two extras, and Infestation doesn't hurt us at all, really. And we take this first badge pretty easily. After defeating her, we can head to Route 4, where we're going to do, you guessed it, more additional training. Because, as I mentioned before, Grant is the next gym leader. And so far in these X and Y runs, he's proven to be a major pain and roadblock. Of course, first we meet the professor's assistants and then battle him, and once again, it's glitched out to where we don't have the three Kanto starters. I pick Oshawott this time because it will provide an HM user for Cut, Surf, and Waterfall. We can make our way through Camphiria Town to Route 7, where there's the Snorlax blocking the way. And just like every run, we have to head to Parfrum Palace. While there, me and Shauna pay $1,000 to get in, we pick up the rare candy, get the HM for cut, watch some fireworks, and then get the polka flute to wake up the sleeping Snorlax. On Route 8, I want to bring your attention to this trainer right here, Rising Star Paulette. She has a level 19 Axew, and this thing knows Dragon Rage, which it used on me, bringing me to 5 HP. Because of this, I had to skip all of the optional trainers on Route 8 on my way to Amberette Town. But don't worry, we'll be backtracking to battle them. In town, I make sure to pick up the heart scale behind the Pokemon Center, rock smash from the lady outside of it, talk to the scientist about some fossils, and then we ride a Rhyhorn all the way to Glittering Cave, where we're going to have to do battle with Team Flare for the first time in this run. Thankfully, all of the Team Flare grunts just have Hound Hours for the time being, but they're going to be a problem once they're fully evolved into Hound Dooms later on. My rival and I dispose of the last two grunts, I take the Jaw Fossil, I get the Dowsing Machine when leaving town, and pick up the optional rare candy on the beach. We have finally arrived in Salage City, and it's time to battle Grant. Of course, I'm going to battle every optional trainer in his gym before taking him on. Grant leads with the ever-so-annoying Amora. Psybeam unfortunately can't get the one-shot or confuse it, and it paralyzes me with Thunder Wave. Shadow Ball can't finish it either, and Grant does use a Hyper Potion, but we did get a special defense drop, which is going to help knock this thing out faster when we're not caught in Parahax. We knock it out with 53 HP remaining, but Tyrant's Bite or Rock Tomb will do big damage to us. Unfortunately, due to being paralyzed and not outspeeding Tyrant, we lose this one. And I decide to do some optional training on Route 10. The Team Flare Grunts that usually appear here won't appear until you defeat Grant, but we do have two rare candies in our bag just in case. After all of the optional training, I'm level 28 and decide to try again because what else am I going to do? But I have a different strategy this time. 
The opponent uses Rock Tomb as a speed control move. I'm going to use this to my advantage. I open the battle with Psybeam again, don't get the confusion, and we get paralyzed by Thunder Wave, but now I'm going to go for Flame Charge, and Amora will start going for Rock Tomb once we outspeed it. We outspeed it after two, and thankfully it misses Rock Tomb, and we're able to get off one more Flame Charge as we knock it out. We definitely outspeed Tyrant at this point. The question is, how much will Rock Tomb do? Well, Psybeam nearly one-shots it, as Rock Tomb brings us to 40 HP, but thankfully, we don't get caught in Parahax, and we're able to knock out Tyrant, and Grant is finally defeated. And that winning strategy only took about three attempts before it worked. Up next, we have a little bit of the Team Flare plotline on our way to Geosenge Town, so let's just skip past all that and Reflection Cave and pick this up in Shalor City, at the Tower of Mastery, where we have to battle our rival Callum. Thankfully, since Frogadier is not yet a Dark type, this one isn't too bad. He leads with Meowstic. Shadow Ball can't quite get the one shot, and it sets up Light Scream. This is going to prove to be problematic for Absol because it's going to lessen the damage from both Ember and Shadow Ball. Both attacks aren't doing very much, as Absol's Slash seems to be doing more and more to me each turn. I get down to 17 HP before the light screen wears off. Thankfully, Shadow Ball is able to finish it, and all that's left is Frogadier, which Psyshock can easily one-shot it. I'm not looking forward to when this thing is a fully evolved Greninja. We can go ahead and get the easiest gym out of the way against Karina. And say it with me, everyone. Psy Shock, Psy Shock, Psy Shock. Her team is a one-shot sweep with Psy Shock. But believe me when I say that the true prize of this gym battle is the TM for Power Up Punch. Remember this for later on in the run. As we leave town, we get Surf from our rival, and we can do some additional training on Route 12 as we head towards Comarine City, along with picking up the leftovers. We have another battle with Callum once we arrive in Comarine City. This one is very similar to the one at the Tower of Mastery. While Meowstic gets off a fake out instead of a light screen, Shadow Ball is now able to one shot it. Against the following Absol, we now have an upgrade over Ember in Mystical Fire, which also one shots it. Last is Frogadier, and just like at the Tower of Mastery, we have Psy Shock for it, which one shots it. Unfortunately for Comarine City Gym Leader Ramos, he provides no challenge whatsoever. Mystical Fire is able to one-shot his entire team. Although we do get the TM for Grass Knot, which could prove to be useful against pesky water Pokemon down the line, we're going to get something much better in Hidden Power. So before heading to Lumio City where our fifth gym battle is, we have to do some more boring plotline stuff with Team Flare and the Kalos Power Plant. The Mighty Yenas and Houndooms on the Grunts teams aren't a problem just yet, and during all of this training, we do level up to learn Flamethrower, which will replace Mystical Fire and will come in handy against the next gym leader, Clement. There's also a TM we can pick up after clearing out all of the Team Flare Grunts that I think could come in handy down the line. Although it uses Delphox's inferior attack stat, that TM is TM43 Flame Charge, which would replicate our strategy against Grant used earlier in the run. Power is restored to the Lumio City Gym, and now we can take on Clement. His most annoying Pokemon is Magneton due to it setting up electric terrain and having the ability Sturdy. Flamethrower is able to one-shot Emolga, and out comes the Magneton. Flamethrower won't one-shot it due to Sturdy, but Clement will also heal it with Hyper Potions, which will also help us stall out Electric Terrain. I go for Flame Charge just to get rid of Sturdy, and to make sure we outspeed Heliosk, which we do, and Flamethrower is able to get the one-shot. Five Gym Badges down. Exiting town towards Route 14, we're greeted by Trevor and Callum, where once again, we have another rival battle. Callum leads with Meowstic, Shadow Ball is able to get the one-shot on it, and Flamethrower is able to one-shot the Absol. But now Greninja, who has the Dark Typing, comes out. I don't have the TM for Hidden Power just yet, and I haven't taught Grass Knot. Flamethrower looks like it's doing just under half. A second Flamethrower brings it into Red Health, 
and torrent range, but thankfully Water Shuriken only hits twice and doesn't do a lot of damage. I continue my optional training on Route 14. Unfortunately, because of the rain here, all of Delphox's fire attacks are weakened in battle, but at least we still have Psy Shock and Shadow Ball. I also pick up the TM for Toxic, which could come in handy. We have arrived in Lavere City, where we can take on the next gym leader, Valerie, the Fairy-type specialist. And as a prize for winning this battle, you get the TM for Dazzling Gleam, which Delphox can learn. Unfortunately, only in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, though. Valerie leads with Mawile. Flamethrower one-shots it, due to it being part Steel-type. Next is Sylveon, who I really want to do a solo run with. Flamethrower almost gets the one-shot thanks to a crit. Swift doesn't do much to me, and she heals it with a Hyper Potion. From here, two flamethrowers are enough to take it out, and last is Mr. Mime. I can switch to Shadow Ball for it, and since it is part Psychic type, it is super effective and one-shots it. With the Gym Badge in hand, it's time to get some Team Flare plotline stuff out of the line by heading to the Pokeball Factory. But don't worry, we're going to be coming back here very shortly. Foreshadowing. I skip all of the optional grunts and make my way directly to the admin, who is no match for me and my rival. Of course, as a reward for getting rid of Team Flare, I'm going to take the Master Ball, which I'll use to catch Xerneas later, and we make our way to Dendemil Town and Frost Cavern. And this is where disaster struck in the run. I haven't saved since the Pokeball Factory, which is quite a bit of progress since then. And remember periodically in this run how I kept bringing up how Houndooms won't be a problem just yet, along with Mighty Ennis? Well, this is the point where they start becoming a problem. Because Mabel here has one Houndoom on her team, and it knows Foul Play, which is the strongest Dark-type attack we've seen to this point in the run. I have nothing on my moveset that can do any type of damage to this thing. Shadow Ball does pathetic damage, and Foul Play one-shots me from full health. Having to redo all of this progress sucks, but it's not the end of the world. I can battle all of the optional grunts within the Pokeball Factory, along with doing some optional training on Route 15 to better prepare. I also do some optional training in the Lost Hotel on Route 16, which is an area I've never entered. I make sure to grab the rare candies on both Route 15 and Route 16. Before the rematch with Mabel, I make sure to save, and after all that optional training, along with popping 5 rare candies, I'm level 60. I'm hoping I can get better damage ranges on Houndoom, but Shadow Ball is still doing not that much, as Foul Play does over half to me. It looks like about a 3-4 to four hit KO, but once again, I lose this battle. And remember earlier in the run, when I said that there would be a TM that would be useful for this? Well, that TM is Power Up Punch. I replace Shadow Ball in place of Power Up Punch because I can always heart scale it back on or pick up the TM for it. Although Power Up Punch uses Delphox's weaker attack stat, it does over half to Houndoom, and since we outspeed it, we're able to two-shot it. If only I would have tried the Power Up Punch strategy sooner, but we can finally arrive in Anastar City, and the first thing I'm going to do here is pick up the TM for Hidden Power, which I'm going to put on my moveset right before our rival battle with Callum, and I wish I still had Shadow Ball for his Meow Stick. Flamethrower is thankfully a two-shot on it, and its Shadow Ball doesn't do too much damage to me. He sends out Greninja next, which is a bit of a surprise, not that he's choosing to go with his ace, but because of its moveset. Hidden Power doesn't one-shot it, and this thing knows Dark Pulse, which does a decent amount of damage. It outspeeds me, and a torrent-boosted Water Shuriken nearly takes me out, but we take it out on the next turn with Hidden Power. Absol is next, and thankfully Flamethrower one-shots it, because this thing could have taken me out. And last is Flareon. I have Psychic that I can use against it, which nearly one-shots it, as Lava Plume does about 20 HP of damage to me, and we knock it out on the next turn. Bit of a closer rival battle than I intended. And watching the footage back, I really should have gone back to Dendemil Town and Heartscaled Shadow Ball back on, instead of waiting to get the TM for it later. But let's go ahead and take on Anastar City's gym leader, Olympia. 
and Hidden Power Electric is super effective against two of her Pokemon, so we won't miss Shadow Ball too much. Hidden Power is able to one-shot the Sigilyph. Next up is Slowking. Hidden Power can't one-shot it, and it gets off a yawn on me. We knock it out the next turn, but now we're asleep going into the final Pokemon, Meowstic. She goes for Fake Out on the first turn that we're asleep, but thankfully, we wake up on the very next turn. Flamethrower nearly one-shots it, and from here, the battle is ours. Olympia is just going to be stuck in a healing loop with Hyper Potions. We eventually get a favorable range with Flamethrower, which one-shots it, and the prize for winning this battle is the TM for Calm Mind, which I'm going to teach to Delphox right away in place of Will-O-Wisp. Leaving the gym, we get a hollow cast from Lysander, and you know what part of the game is coming up next. Lysander's Labs. And I say this in every X and Y solo run, but in case you've never played the games, Lysander, he's evil. He wishes to wipe out most of the world population in order to return the planet to a beautiful, unspoiled state. He will stop at nothing to achieve his goals, and he plans on using Xerneas to help him achieve this. And a lot of that, I just read straight off of Google, which you can also do in case you want to find out more about Lysander and this game. Google also told me that Lysander makes a return in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I actually attempted a solo run of those games about six months ago. I wanted to run Blacephalon, but they just are so slow and have too many cutscenes, I just gave up on it. But let's play a new game. We pick the red button over the blue button, but it turns out we made the wrong choice. But to give you the quick cliff notes of this section, we have to go back to Geosenge Town. We battle Lysander again. Hidden Power Electric proves to take down his Gyarados easily. My rival and I do a bunch of double battles against some Team Flare Grunts. Eventually, we get to Xerneas' chamber. We have to do battle with Xerneas. And we have to capture Xerneas. Yes, it is required in these games, which I can't wait to run this thing in a solo run of these games and we battle Lysander one last time. I have to switch Delphox into battle because you start the battle with Xerneas in the top slot in your party. I think you're supposed to battle with just Xerneas, or at least the game wants you to, but we're not doing that for a solo run. Mian Xiao almost takes us down with some powered up high jump kicks, but we've set up some calm minds, and from here, we can sweep the rest of Lysander's team with Psychic and Hidden Power. And setting up three Calm Minds is key in this battle to one-shot the Gyarados. I only set up two Calm Mind in the first battle, and Gyarados was able to hang on from a hidden power and then one-shot me with Earthquake. But with all of the Lysander questline done, we can watch him destroy his own weapon. And now, we can take care of some errands before getting our 8th and final gym badge. On Route 15, I'm going to make a pit stop to the Terminus Cave. This is actually the home of Zygrade, who you can't access until you defeat the Elite Four. But at the end of the cave is a TM that we want, and that TM is none other than TM30 Shadow Ball, which I'll want to reteach Delphox when we get to the League. When I arrive in Coraway Town, the first thing I'm going to do is pick up the rare candy, and then I have a series of mandatory battles. I have a rematch against Professor Sigamore, I have a battle against Shauna, I have a battle against Tierno, and then finally, Trevor. After all that, I get the HM for Waterfall, and then we can head to Snowbell City to finally take on our final gym leader. And although he's the 8th gym leader, Wolfric is a one-shot sweep with Flamethrower. The gym challenge is done, but we still have a few errands to do before heading to Victory Road. And to bring up Flamethrower again, I actually pick up the TM for it in Anastar City, along with picking up the TM for Psychic in the Pokemon Village. The beginning of Victory Road is pretty straightforward, however, the end is where it gets a little bit tougher. I want to avoid as many optional trainers as I can, however, I do face two. An ace trainer with three Pokemon and a black belt with a Machamp. I pick up the rare candy, and now it's time to face our rival for the final time. He leads with Meowstic, and I'm gonna start the battle by setting up Calm Mind. Meowstic does get a fake out on me, and that's the only amount of damage I take aside from its Shadow Balls while setting up. After two Calm Minds, I'm able to one-shot sweep his entire team with Flamethrower and Hidden Power Electric. 
However, Callum is not the true final challenge before the league. It's actually a group of three trainers that I'm going to label as the Gauntlet of Victory Road. The first just has a Gigalith and a Trevenant. However, veteran trainer Katrina here was a huge problem. Not the Glaceon, we can knock that out in one hit with Flamethrower. It's her second Pokemon, a Snorlax. This thing, like a lot of Pokemon in the Kalos region, knows Earthquake. Flamethrower isn't doing a lot of damage, and even with Leftovers recovery, this thing three-shots me. I actually have a bit of a time loss backtracking, because I had to rebattle the trainer with a Trevenant and Gigalith, and Gigalith nearly knocked out Delphox with its Stone Edge. I have no healing items in my inventory, and the only free heal I can get is within Victory Road. There's a trainer actually before your final rival battle with Callum that heals your Pokemon, so I need to make the long trek back to do that. Before rematching Katrina, I put the King's Rock on in place of leftovers and bring out an old strategy and teach Power Up Punch over Hidden Power. In the rematch with Katrina, I go for Power Up Punch right away on the Glaceon, since it is weak to it and we can get some attack boosts before the Snorlax comes out. I get a total of 3 as Glaceon just hits me with a weak blizzard. With 3 power ups, we're doing a lot more than half to the Snorlax, and it goes down in 2 power up punches. However, the final trainer, Veteran Giles, was a huge pain. His first Pokemon is a Skarmory that has the ability Sturdy. Because of this, it will survive a flamethrower and hit me with Night Slash which does decent damage. We can knock it out, and next up is Alakazam. This thing knows Shadow Ball, and I really should have put Shadow Ball back on my moveset for it. We get by it, but his final Pokemon is Umbreon. Because it's a defensive tank, I have nothing good against it. Power Up Punch does maybe a quarter, but we get a flinch. My second barely misses the knockout, and Payback takes me out. I decide to put Shadow Ball on my moveset in place of Psychic so that I have something that can one-shot the Alakazam so it can't retaliate with an attack of its own. I decide to go for Power Up Punch right away in the rematch. Since the Skarmory will get an attack off on us, might as well. And this way, I can go into the Umbreon with at least one attack boost. We knock out the Skarmory with Flamethrower and the following Alakazam with Shadow Ball. And now it's time for that pesky Umbreon. My first power up punch does about a third, as payback brings me to 25 HP. However, my next power up punch gets a flinch thanks to the King's Rock, and we can finally take this thing out. I never thought I'd be using power up punch with Delphox, but now it's time for the Elite Four. So just like in the Greninja video, I'll be explaining my moveset changes between each member. Obviously, Seabold is going to be the hardest for Delphox to face. He's also the first member that I decided to face. Before battling Seabold, I used 6 rare candies to bring myself to level 78, and my moves are Hidden Power, Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Grass Knot. The battle is off to a bad start, as Hidden Power can't get the one shot, and Water Pulse confuses me. Thankfully, I don't hit myself in confusion, and we're able to knock out Clawitzer with a few hidden powers after Seabold uses a few full restores on it. He sends out Gyarados next, and this is the main reason why I went with Hidden Power Electric. It's two times weak to it, so we don't have to worry about an earthquake in retaliation. And from here, the rest of the battle is easy. I have Grass Knot for Barbarical, and I kept Shadow Ball on my moveset just for Starmie for this battle. So in terms of type matchups, that's the hardest member of the Elite Four out of the way. I decided to take on Malvin next, and my moveset for this battle is Hidden Power, Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Psychic. I want to set up Calm Mind so that I can boost the power of Psychic and then sweep her team. Unfortunately, Pyroar keeps going for Noble Roar, which lowers attack and special attack but at least my special defense is nearly maxed out. I decide to go on the offensive, and after a bad first roll with Psychic, my second takes out Pyroar. I set up a Calm Mind on Torkoal because this thing's just gonna spam Curse and then go for Earthquake. And from here, I have all the special attack boosts I need. Psychic takes it out in one hit, Shadow Ball takes out Chandelure, and while Hidden Power Electric can't take out the Talonflame in one hit, it KOs itself with Brave Bird. 
Up next is Wickstrom, because I thought I was walking into Drasna's chamber. But my move set for this battle is Protect, Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Flamethrower. Klefki unfortunately gets a Torment off on me, so I can't use the same move twice in a row. It goes down in one Flamethrower, and next is Probo Pass. I go for Shadow Ball because this thing has Sturdy, and Power Gem doesn't do too much damage to me. I can take it out with Flamethrower on the next turn, and next is Scizor. I go for Protect because I know it's going to use Night Slash, and now I can use Flamethrower again to knock it out since it's 4 times super effective. Last is Aegislash. I go for Protect, hoping that it goes for an attack, which it does. Unfortunately, on the next turn, it just goes for King Shield, so my Flamethrower is blocked. So I'm gonna go for Protect once again, trying to bait out an attack, which it goes for Shadow Claw again. This time, I'm gonna go for Calm Mind in hopes that it stays in its blade form, which it does. Knowing that I'm in one-shot range, it stays there, and Flamethrower can get the knockout. Last, as mentioned before, is Drasna, and my moveset for this battle is Protect, Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Psychic. Against the Dragalge, I set up three Calm Minds as it just keeps going for Surf, not doing much damage. And from here, once I'm fully set up, I can one-shot sweep her entire team. All that's left is the Champion Diantha. For this battle, I'm going with the moveset of Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, Calm Mind, and Psychic. As it stands right now, Delphox is on pace to have the best time for a solo run in X and Y, but just how good of a time? Let's find out. Diantha leads with Halucha. This thing could set up Swords Dance on me and be a little dangerous. However, it just spams X Scissor and then goes for Poison Jab. After I've set up three Calm Minds, I can sweep her entire team with Psychic and Shadow Ball. Yes, I know it's a very anticlimactic champion battle, unlike Aegislashes and Greninjas. However, Delphox clocks in with an amazing final time. It finishes the game at 6 hours and 40 minutes in-game time, more than 20 minutes faster than both Aegislash and Greninja. And now that we're a few months past the announcement of Pokemon Legends ZA, I thought I would show this battle against AZ. And I actually don't know what happens if you lose this battle. I think one day I'll do that and put it in a video. But his Pokemon, there really isn't much to say. I set up on the Torkoal and then sweep. But as always, thank you for the continued support on the channel. In the next X and Y solo run, we're going to be going with the final starter, Chestnut. I'm going to get started on that video right away, but please let me know how this new microphone sounds. I used a new one for the Greninja video, but as you can tell with that one, the audio was just way off. I'm going from the Samsung Pro Mic G to the Shure SM7B. Special shout out to my one and only channel member, Chazuel Fridays, and I guess I'll catch you guys in my next video. I missed the channel anniversary, but that's okay. Perhaps I can redeem myself with another birthday solo run. That's all from me. Take care, everybody.